Hi, I'm Wendy Swart. I'm the author of A Monster Like Me and The Wish and the Peacock. So I got some questions from Stacy Douglas, who is the library assistant from Copper Creek Elementary in Arizona. And she wants to know, what inspired A Monster Like Me? Well, when I was little, I had a hemangioma on my forehead. It was about this big and it was about the size of a golf ball. You can still see the scar it goes from here up to about right there. And um, when I was about two months old, it started out as a little pinprick on my forehead and it grew out flat. And then it raised up and it was all full of blood and it was, it was hot to the touch and tight. And no matter how my mom parted my hair or gave me bangs, you can't hide a golf ball sticking out of the front of your head. Um, when I was about 10 years old, it deflated. And so it ended up being sort of an empty sack hanging there. And so then we were able to go have it removed safely. Because you can't remove it before then because you know how if you get cut on your head, then it bleeds a lot? Well, this is a tumor made out of blood vessels on my head. So if they had cut into it when it was still active and growing, and then it, it would have caused a lot of scarring. It would have done a lot of bleeding. And so they had to leave it until I was 10 years old. Now there's these amazing new medicines I've seen where kids who have them in bad places, like around their eyes or in their nose or uh, something like that, they can take this medicine that helps reverse it. Um, in fact, when I was on tour last year, I met a girl named Sophie. I think she lived in Kentucky or Indiana. I met a girl named Sophie who had a hemangioma around her eye in the same place that my main character has. But she was able to take the medicine and so instead of being this a bulbous thing around her eye. Hers was just very slight. It was like a wine stain all around her eye. They didn't have that when I was little, so I lived with it on my forehead and it affected my, my parents as much as it did me. Sometimes people were pretty cool about me having this on my head and uh, sometimes they were very much not. I did have a preschool teacher that told the rest of the kids not to play with me because I had the mark of the devil on my forehead and that they would be infected by my badness if, uh, if they played with me. And so I had to come home and see, why? Why did I have this? And my mom pulled me from the school because she's a good mom. And then with regular kids, it was the usual stuff like, hey, hamburger face. Hey, your brains are leaking out. Hey, you have a big booger on your head. And um, so there was the regular kid things, and then there was grown-up things too. Like one time... I went to the grocery store with my mom and uh, a lady with teenagers looked at me, pointed at me and said, hey look kids, that kid doesn't need a costume for Halloween, she's already got one. And then they laughed and walked off and my mom was so shocked she didn't know what to say. She didn't even, she couldn't speak even. Um, and then there was other things that happened after that. When you are when you're a kid and you have something that makes you look different from other people, then sometimes people are kind and sometimes they're not kind. And um, so I thought, what if I believed them when they called me a monster? Um, that, was, that was one of many things that happened. And I thought, what if I believed them when they called me a monster? What if I believed the mean things they said? So in this book, Sophie, so Sophie there, she's 10, just turning 11. She has a great big book of monsters and she loves all sorts of things of myth and legend. And if she has any flaw, it's that she believes everything. She believes too much. When I was little, I used to love fantastical creatures. So I had a unicorn collection. Most of them are gone now, but I collected unicorns and I loved dragons and uh, all kinds of other things. Any kind of a fantastical creature, any kind of a legend, any kind of a story, I loved it. I used to wish that the things that she sees around her were real. Also, when I was little, because I loved all these legends and fantastical stories, I used to wish so hard that magic was real. When I lived in Portland, which is where I lived when I had the hemangioma blood tumor on my head, 
I had a teacher who was super cool and she took us on big field trips. We went all around the different places and she taught us all the local legends. And um, so in the book are some of my favorite places that I went to when I was young. I think every kid sometimes wishes that they could just kind of hide, you know, just, just kind of hide from the rest of the world and be able to hide behind something. And that's what Sophie does with her book and with her hair over her eye so that it hides the hemangioma right there. I know that's probably a lot, uh, but I wanted to do my best to explain where a monster like me came from and why it is so very personal for me because a lot of the, the things that happened to her also happened to me and it has all the places that I loved when I lived in Portland. It has the myths, the legends, um, the creatures, all the things that I loved best in the world that my teachers taught me when I was Sophie's age and it's a story of self-acceptance and I especially wanted everyone to know that that you are beautiful just the way you are. However you are is perfect. So remember that. Don't let anyone tell you different. You are perfect the way you are.